In 1775, the Continental Congress created the Chaplain Corps. Under the command of General George Washington, each soldier was required to attend worship service every Sunday. While other armies advanced on their feet, Washington's troops advanced on their knees. It's time for the Chaplain's Report with Caleb Colquitt on tactics. Chaplain's Report today comes from the book of Daniel. We're going to be continuing along those lines. So in the, the book of Daniel, just to give you a little bit of context, if you haven't been watching the previous installments of the Chaplain's Report on this, Daniel is giving a prayer about the plight of Israel and, and where they are. And he continues that in Daniel 9, 9 through 11. To the Lord our God belong compassion and forgiveness, for we have rebelled against him. Nor have we obeyed the voice of the Lord our God to walk in his teaching, which he set before us through his servants, the prophets. Indeed, all Israel has transgressed your law and turned aside, not obeying your voice. So the curse has been poured out on us, along with the oath which is written in the law of Moses, the servant of God. For we have sinned against him. Now, this verse just continues on the theme that we've already talked about, about how Daniel really recognizes that the reason that Israel is in the, the state that it's in, the reason that it is no longer in the nation of Israel, that their people have been taken away, that the Persians and the Medes and the, the Babylonians have taken them away from their homeland, is because of things that they've done, is because of the evil that they have done before the Lord, that they have not obeyed his voice, they have not kept his commandments, they have not stayed true to the covenant that they had with God. That's the bigger overarching theme, but I want to specifically look at something that he mentions here. That right in the middle of the verse, or the middle of the passage that we read, he says that not only have we rebelled against him, but uh, God sent them the prophets, his teachings which he set before us through his servants, the prophets. Now this is something that we see pretty frequently mentioned by Jesus Christ as well, several hundred years later, in the time of the Roman occupation, is that even though God continuously sent prophets to Israel, he was always sending them messengers, always saying, hey, here I am, this is what you need to do, this is what you did wrong, this is how to correct it. This was a common, common occurrence, a common theme that continued through the Bible. And yet, when it came to that, every single time, God sends them the prophets, and most of the time they didn't listen. There are a handful of exceptions, but most of the time, not only did they not listen, they actually attacked the prophets. Many, many prophets died at the hands of people that didn't like them. Unfortunately, this happened a lot. The people died simply for doing what God told them to do. That they died simply for carrying that message and carrying the water for God and telling Israel, Look, you're not living right. They didn't like the message, so they killed the messenger. As if that would change anything. And then they wondered why they got stuck in situations like this where Israel was in captivity for their rebellion, where they were taken away from their promised land. You see, unfortunately, this is a cycle that really should resonate with us as well. That there are people that have ample opportunity that God constantly sends them messenger after messenger after messenger after messenger, pleading with them, please repent, please turn away from these things, because if you don't, bad things are going to happen to you. If that happens, if that takes place, you are going to fall prey to the consequences of your own decisions. And God is constantly sending messengers to them and constantly sending them signs. And they just say, no thanks. Not interested. And thankfully, sometimes when that happens, sometimes when people continue to ignore God and then they hit rock bottom, sometimes then people realize, wow, that was a bad idea. And then they come back to where they're supposed to be. They come back to a place where they are honoring God and doing what he wants them to do and they cease their rebellion. But just like Israel, most of the time in our personal lives, we don't do that. 
most of the time we ignore the profits, we ignore the signpost, and then we hit rock bottom. And then even at that point, most people, they still don't see it. And that's really the case that Daniel is trying to make here. He's saying Israel needs to repent. God's not the reason that we're in this mess. We are. And so he's trying to set this up and, and to explain to them, he's like, guys, we had every opportunity. God sent prophets to us constantly. We had the law of Moses. We had the Torah. We had the covenant. We had the promised land. We had prosperity. We had victory over our, our enemies. We had everything going for us. And yet we still refuse to do what God asked us to do. Doesn't that sound an awful lot like modern day America to a lot of you? Doesn't that sound like what we're going through right now? That here in the United States of America, we've got everything going for us. We have religious freedom. We have freedom of speech. We have churches all over the place. We're a majority Christian nation. We've got all the wealth that we could ask for. We're wealthier than any other country in the history of the human race. And yet, even though we're seeing all these signposts, all these warnings, hey, knock it off, don't go any further. We've got the Bible ready at our fingertips for free. We don't even have to pay for Bibles anymore because you can get it on an app on your phone. We've got all these massive advantages that no people in the history of mankind has ever had. And there's still so many people going, no thanks. Mm, don't really want to do that. And all the warning signs are there, and sadly, most people just don't pay attention to it. I think that there's a kinship here that we can really recognize between us and Daniel. That if we are living the right way, if we are trying to obey God and trying to do the right thing, that just like Daniel was observing here in his prayer, there's so many people that just don't see it. There are so many people that walk through life basically asleep to the spiritual reality surrounding them. That they are in open rebellion to God and they don't even understand that they are. Or if they are, they relish in it and don't want to quit. But the thing is, even though Daniel was praying for them and praying that they would see the error of their ways, most of them still never happened for them. But there were some that did. And even though the vast majority didn't, the some that did, the some that listened to Daniel, the some that listened to the other prophets, they were worth it. They were worth God sending them into danger, sometimes to lose their own life, to try to bring people this message of God loves you and he wants what's best for you. Please listen to him and obey his laws. And that's the message that we should be sending to people still today. Stay the course, friends. <laughs> Now, I know you're here because you're interested in information on what's going on in the state of Alabama and around the world, and you've come to the right place for that. But it's YouTube, so you could also just be here because you're bored. If you want me to keep making videos to keep you occupied, you need to go ahead and like and subscribe. Otherwise, you're going to have to go back to playing Minesweeper.